So I hear you're a Canadian who doesn't like Canada. Well, we are America's hat. <laughs> no, that, that, that's stupid. <laughs> oh, that's what makes it perfect. Yeah, I think it will start with having the two languages. Well, I hate that you're bilingual, not multilingual. Obviously, like, monolingual is superior lingual. But if you're going to have a number of lingualities that's not one, I, I feel like two is not a good compromise. Yes, you need to have one language. Because language is the, the thing that you communicate with. One or infinite is my counterpoint. No, I don't think... I think infinite just makes things infinitely worse. Okay, not infinite, but like as many as uh, actually exist in your country in any significant way. I think, for instance, like mm. saying that, you know, Mandarin and Arabic and, I don't know, native Canadian languages being put as like second tier status. Like, I think French should be in that second tier or all those other languages should be on the same tier as French. That's my, uh, that's my hot take. Well, I think Quebec should be separate because we should both only have a, a country with one language each. And thus, I am a Canadian who wishes for Canada to fall apart. <laughs> the only problem with Canada falling apart is uh, it cuts you in two, right? So you basically get free Canadas. Yes. And then when you get free Canadas, you're like, well, what's Ontario really even doing with, you know, all the Western provinces anyway? There is a massive gap between... Ontario and the Western provinces, but that gap is within Ontario as there's an, almost no development in between Winnipeg and like Sault Ste. Marie, yeah. which is a city that's on the lakes. But basically between Toronto and Winnipeg, there's almost nothing. There's just a sea of emptiness. Which means that if Quebec falls off, the Atlantics are off, and Ontario's off, and then the West is off, and then suddenly where you are, four different countries. See, but once, and then even then, once, you, once you're in four Canadas anyway, like Newfoundland, Newfoundland, uh, the, the, the funny province that has Labrador attached to it, um, that province, like, why is that staying with Canada? Like, they're not even really uh, that connected to Canada, right? So why not go their independent way? And then once you're doing that, it just kind of like... Actually, they were their own country at some point. Really recently. Really recently, right? I only learned this because I went there and I was shocked. I was like, you're making this up. You can't You can't have been an independent country, you know, post-World War II. But yeah, no. They are uh, a bit of the UK that... Yep, they were, they were an independent country up until 1949, I think. Which is shocking to me. Like... No, 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 no. In the Great Depression, they basically went bankrupt and then they decided to rejoin England. Yeah, yeah, that's what, it's, it's funny, they, they literally were just like, we don't have the money to be independent anymore, so we need to join someone. Uh, I want to say at one point they almost joined the US too, which is uh, a really big controversy, like the US kind of wanted to take it, because they had so many military bases there anyway. I, I love the idea of like the alternate history where uh, America owns New Finland, like, it feels like it'd be a really America thing to do, right? Cut Canada off from even more. Yeah, if America owns New Finland, there's no reason why they shouldn't just own the the uh, maritime provinces <laughs> like New Brunswick. I mean... And while they're at it, while they're at it... Why not take Nova Scotia? There's actually a political party called Parti 51, uh -huh. which is Party 51, which is for Quebec to leave Canada and join America. <laughs> oh man, that's that sounds like a parody if like... No, 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 it was real. If Quebec's going to be in any country, it's got to be either its own or it's got to be Canada. I, I don't see any real argument for joining America, right? Actually, wait, I do see... I. Economics, maybe. Well, um, I think the reason that they did that was that the problem is that Canada has an issue with Quebec being there as a French country, but America would not have the same baggage. So they could be part of a bigger country without the bad feelings, <laughs> the bad blood, basically. I, um, while we're on the subject of like Canada falling apart, have you ever, ever heard about Bermuda and like uh, the negotiations they had with uh, Canada to join at one point? I think maybe Jamaica was on the same. No, but I do know that the Turks and Caicos wanted to be part of oh, Canada. Oh, yeah, no, sorry, it's point. the Turks and Caicos. Yeah, 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 sorry. I mean, there's so many British territories in the near America area. I, I do get them mixed up. But yeah, it was the Turks and Caicos, you're right. They they tried to join at one point, and I, I would love them to be in Canada. It would just, it'd be a, such a perfect fit, in my opinion. Yeah, because then we would have our own Hawaii. <laughs> Every country deserves its own Hawaii. Except on the Atlantic rather than the Pacific. Like... If there's one thing we've learned from Pearl Harbor being an excuse to start World War II, it's that every country needs Hawaii, so you can have your own little issues, you know? The UK had Hong Kong, that was nice. That was swell. <laughs> yes. Uh, Australia's got uh, New Zealand. That's definitely not a controversial statement. I think that's different. I'm pretty sure Australia's Hawaii is um, the... Christmas Islands? 
Easter Islands? No, not the Christmas. I'm pretty sure there's the Canes. Canes. Cane, ca oh, Cane. Cane. No. Yeah, it said let's. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's a, that's connected to Australia, though, right? That doesn't count. It's gonna have yeah. an island. It's gonna. But the immediately off the peninsula, there's a territory that's a bunch of islands that are near Papua New Guinea. Really? Oh yeah, I know, I know the one. Uh, there was a big old controversy there recently. The Norfolk Islands, maybe. I, I also realized that what we're doing is we're basically describing maps <laughs> in a podcast <laughs> format. <laughs> is this not what people want to hear from a geography podcast? Well, what else could there be? I, I guess we, we're basically just geography for the the blind. Geography for the blind. That's what a podcast is, right? It's a YouTube video for blind people. So, uh, do you think between us we can name all 50 states? Because that'd be a high quality exercise in uh, ma mapping right there, right? People love it when you just describe things that you can visually look at. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start. Okay, <laughs> so you have Hawaii, Alaska, California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Oh, you're doing it. You're Nevada. actually doing it. <sighs> anyway, so now you need to do the provinces of Canada. Oh, easy. Um, left to right. Wait, do I have to count the territories? Because... I, I don't like the territory. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know the names. Like, there's like Northwestern, but then there's like a part of the Northwestern that's got the Nunavut. Yeah, let, let's just not count up there. You know, we count we count the provinces <laughs> with people in. There's three of them. Oh, is there only three? It's, it's only not that three. complicated. Oh, so yeah, Nunavut, them. Northwestern, that other one, uh, the Northeastern. <laughs> the Northern? <laughs> is it just called the Northern Territories? And then the Northwestern? Then... <laughs> Yukon. In... Other places, it's known as the place where no one lives. <laughs> Actually, it's it's the smallest territory, but it has the same po it has about the as same the population as yeah. all the other ones. So technically, it's the most densely populated. <laughs> I know there are flights from um, Frankfurt to Yellowknife, and I'm so fascinated by that concept. Like, who is going to Yellowknife? Is it Yellowknife? Uh, the, does that sound like a city in the Yukon? Yeah, Yellowknife is the capital oh, of the Northwest it's, Territories. It's the capital. Oh, so it's not in Yukon, but uh, it, it's fascinating to me, though. Yukon, the capital, is Whitehorse. Oh, there are flights from Frankfurt to Whitehorse also, then, I believe. Um, that is a thing that is true. Like, it's maybe only in the winter or in summer, whichever makes more sense. But that is mind-blown that the economics on that flight work. Like, because there are no flights from the UK to Alaska, or like, from anywhere in Europe to Alaska, to Hawaii. But for some reason, there's uh, there's Germany to capital of one of the things. And then you got four maritimes, so... Newfoundland, uh, Nova Scotia. Newfoundland is actually not part of the Maritimes. Is it not? It's part of the Atlantic provinces, which is inclusive of the Maritimes and Newfoundland. So all the other three are called the Maritimes, and then Atlantic is the four together. That seems needlessly exclusive. That seems that seems really mean to Newfoundland, you know? Well, they did. They they were the last one to come in, so we obviously needed to to make them a club where they couldn't. Join. It just feels it, it feels really mean to be like, oh yeah, we're gonna make a separate term for you because we've kind of got the cool Atlantics and then we've got the lame one. No, 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 you don't understand. When they were went bankrupt, yep. they chose to join your country rather That's than true. my country. That's true. <laughs> it's like we're like jealous ex-girlfriends. Yeah. But you're a current now, girlfriend. Now I've, uh, now I've offended one of our provinces. Okay. And um, do you like Newfoundland? Would you get rid of it if you were given the chance? If you're Grand Commander of Canada and someone's like... No, I was, pu I was purely Aww. joking. I, I, like, I Newfoundland. like Newfoundland a lot too. They're, it's a very nice place. Um, but yeah, so Newfoundland. Uh, <laughs> let's do it. Let's finish this. Nova Scotia. Uh, New Brunswick. And the one where no one lives. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Prince Edward Island. Why is one island a province? Why is one island the same as British Columbia? Who 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 made that a rule? Why why doesn't it just get absorbed? Interesting fact, that island decided not to join the country. Really? On the first try when the other when New Brunswick and Nova Scotia did. Oh. So PAI decided to be all alone as a tiny island. So I I like those bulls. I like the the ghoul of just being like, you know, what? There's literally the one of the biggest countries in the world forming to the south, and we're trying to be a counterweight to that. But nah, I think I think this one little island can go its own way. That is incredibly ballsy. Uh, how long did that last before they went bankrupt then? <laughs> I, I don't think they went bankrupt. Their mind. I think they, they just kind of joined later. They were, they oh, you think they're being dumb. being dumb. You hear that, Prince Edward Island viewers? You're dumb. You got bad political decisions <laughs> going on there. I bet, I bet you don't even know how this works. I, what, what I think is actually interesting about Canada is you have a Senate, um, but instead of doing it by state, you do it by region, right? Well, technically they are by province, but it's supposed to balance the regions. 
So the Maritimes, which is three provinces. Wait, Newfoundland separate? Doesn't include Newfoundland. Have 24. They get 24 without Newfoundland. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I know the 24, because I know it's the same in Quebec, Ontario. Because there's 10... There's 10 in New Brunswick, 10 in Nova Scotia, and 4 in That's what you get for joining the Union lost. Prince Edward Island sucks. For the Maritimes. Yeah, you make bad decisions. That's why you get four senators. So that's our thing on the podcast. (laughs) And then Quebec gets 24. Ontario gets 24. And then, how did that work out? There's four of them. Do they have each six? I'm pretty sure they have eight. Bad news for you, friend. They all have six. Even Newfoundland and Labrador has six. So somehow, I don't know who was in charge when this decision was made. It was decided that British Columbia and Alberta, which both are very popular states, right, have the same say as Newfoundland, which that feels a bit backwards to me, right? Like Nova Scotia has more senators than lit- literally all of Alberta or all of British Columbia. Does that not feel a bit wrong to well, you? Well, the thing about that is that the Senate is not used for anything, actually. Oh, okay. It's like, like a... We could get rid of it and it wouldn't change anything. Okay. It's like the House of So Lords. it doesn't really matter anyway like the house of lords it's like uh it's just kind of like uh you need a second house so you kind of okay i'm down with that i really like the house of lords only because they all wear gold and i i'm fascinated by the idea that everyone goes into office and they're like hey we shouldn't have people who are in charge of the country in some indirect way because they were born into it. And they always leave being like, actually, we'll leave them be for a bit. Like, it's such a ridiculous body to exist. And that's kind of why I like it, you know? It's kind of like Prince Edward Island. I love you guys, by the way. I was joking before. But when something's so ridiculous, it almost becomes endearing, right? Isn't that the whole point of Canada as a country? Kind of like Newfoundland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It is, right? I mean, like, what, what, what were they doing as a country? Who... Who thought that they could exist? Or even a better example is, because uh, I think it's next to Newfoundland, uh, St. Pierre, yeah, right? St. Pierre and Maquillon, the, the part of France stole our land. See, I really want to know why France holds on to that, because it can't be cheap. It's probably for fishing. But I reckon they lose a lot of money on it. It's got to be like Russia and Barentsburg or something like that, you know? It's one of those places where the country is trying to hold on to some future geopolitical claim, but they can't work out what France would ever get to do with Canada. Because Quebec doesn't really like France, right? Am I wrong about that? Um, they do not consider them... They, they consider themselves their own thing. Like, there's not even... Even with that jokey thing earlier about Quebec joining America, there's not even a joke about Quebec and France joining up, right? Yeah, there's no... There isn't... There, they never consider that. Yeah, it's not, it's not even an option. It's more of a, the French think the Quebec sound weird. <laughs> and thus, the... <laughs> Quebecers think the French are stuck up. But basically, the Quebecers think of the way of the French the way the rest of the world thinks the French. <laughs> okay, real, real talk. Uh, what do you think of the French? Do you actually think they're uh, snooty and arrogant? Or do you think uh, the stereotype has no truth? Well, I, I think Paris... I think the stereotype of France has Paris is the stereotype the rest of the world has of France. So they may just be basing it all on Paris. Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually what I would like... Uh, I, I have been to Paris and it is a little bit uh, arrogant, but everywhere else in France, they're so nice, you know? It's like, oh, I didn't realize you could be French and polite. Like, whoa, what's that all about? Are you allowed to say that on a podcast or is that racist? No, nah, no, this is podcast is basically just going to be we offend everybody we possibly can. <laughs> so let's talk about why Canada shouldn't exist, eh? How about that? The reason is that I do not think that countries that speak multiple languages should exist. I think there should be countries that speak one language because you're all speaking the same language. You all have the same worldview. If you have the same words that you can read, you will develop a similar worldview. You don't constantly end up fighting in languages you don't even understand in, so you don't even know where you're fighting. We actually have this in common. I've, I, I shared this view in a video and people called me a, a linguo nationalist, but... I totally agree. Yeah, if you if you can't communicate with someone, what do you have in common with them? Why should you have a common system of governance with someone you can't physically understand? You know, like, uh, you know, because there's, there's not understanding someone because they have such a different way of life. And there's not understanding someone because you can't understand them. The country will not exist for very long. So so the country's doomed. I want to cycle back around to Canada, but I'm going to go for a list of countries. You tell me whether you think they should exist or not. Okay. Switzerland. Well, Switzerland is the exception, I think, actually, to this rule. 
Um, the reason being that they're barely a country anyway. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong. They're basically just the space in the mountains that Germany, Italy, and France didn't get. So their entire existence revolves around not being those countries, being like the, the negative space. And thus, I think they fill that role pretty well. See, I, I'm, we're going to end the game real quick and set, but I would say that's what Canada... That's the biggest part of can Canada's identity. It's the fact that you're not Americans. No, 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 but here's the problem. We're only not one country, rather than not multiple countries. You're also not the UK, right? No, we don't, we're only not America. Do you think you're not, not the UK even a little bit? We literally don't... We do not consider ourselves not any other country than America. That's really sad, you know? You think having only one country to rebel against is not enough for a country to justify existing with? Yeah, because... It's not fun. <laughs> Why is it not fun? <laughs> because it's entirely a one-way thing. We don't like America, and America doesn't care about us. America loves you, I think. Or maybe, I could be wrong, but I, I've yet seen American be like, I hate Canadians, or even I dislike Canada. It's, uh, yeah, it's all apathy, or, hey, they're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, they, they tend to, to like us a lot. It's, it's pretty much like, if you mess with Canada, that is the way you get the Americans really pissed off. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like you're their little brother to them, and you're rebelling against them so hard, and they're like, "Whatever, Canada, you do you." Yeah, and the fact that we are not America is another reason why Canada shouldn't exist, because we should be just be America, and be done with it. You guys have been to war once, right? If I'm not mistaken. Well, yes, that that is true. You'd be a lot richer if you were Americans. That'd be nice. You'd also have cheaper milk, right? What I actually think is you being so close to America is where all of your wealth has come from. Or oh, most of it. And then I think that if you were literally America, because in the same way that like even Mississippi, the poorest state, isn't that much worse off than like California or Texas, right? Like there's, there's, a, there's a disparity, but it's nowhere near like a Canada to the best of America, you know? Like the, the average income in Canada is half of the average American income, I want to say. I think it's more like three quarters. Oh, is it? Is it close to three quarters? I think maybe GDP per capita is three quarters, but maybe income is half. I know there's so many figures, that's the problem, yeah. But basically the thing is that if you look at the map of the population density of Canada, the thing is that you'll, you'll notice is that our population density is an extension of the population densities of the United States. And what that means is that there's large chunks of Canada in between our poverty centers that have virtually nobody living there. And then the most immediately adjacent place to them is the immediately to the south of the border part of the United States. And thus, BC is more integrated with Washington and Oregon than it is with the rest of Canada. And the prairies are more integrated with the American Great Plains. And Ontario is more integrated with the American uh, Midwest. And Quebec is more integrated with the Boston area. And the Maritimes are more integrated with Maine than they would be with the, their, their adjacent parts of Canada. Perhaps in the extreme east, this may not be the case, as there is decent uh, amount integration with Ontario and Quebec. Every single uh, Canadian city has this problem where you're isolated from Canada, but really close to somewhere in America. And in, in the cases of, uh, by the way, I'm going to call the United States America. I know that annoys uh, some. I think it's mostly Spanish speakers, right? But there's a lot of people who are like, no, call it the US of A. Now nah, America. What are you going to do about that? Yeah, Canadians is called America, I'm pretty okay, sure. Okay, Canadians do call it America too. It, it annoys Latin America because they believe that the Americas are one continent because Latin America obviously straddles both continents. So they think of it as the same continent, which is similar to like Kansastan, who thinks of the Eurasian landmass as one continent because they straddle both of them and they want to be on one continent rather than two. So my role on this podcast is to to offend the people that you don't want to. And I'm going to say, you know what, Latin America, get over it. It's two Americas. The world agrees. It's only you that thinks, oh, yeah, this is kind of one landmass. I get it. The continent system makes no sense. We all agree on that, right? Like, no one thinks the continent system is perfect or even close, right? But for some reason, there's two Americas. You're on the wrong America, the sad America. Okay, I'm, I'm just going for a whole continent now. Uh... I mean, it is true, right? There is a sad America and there's a happy America. And one of those is north of the equator. And one of those is south. I'm not going to call out any either one of them. And one of them is to the west and one of them is to the east. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to say which one's happy and sad. You know, if, if you think your America is the sad America, then maybe that's on you. Latin America. That's all I'm saying. Um, but anyway, so yeah, 
Uh, get out of here, Latin America. Cannot let me call it America. So here's, uh, but yeah, there's the. Th <laughs> that's that's gotta be our thing. Like every ten minutes, I'll just pick a place in the world to offend uh, at your behest. But yeah, the thing is, is um, Vancouver, for instance, is so much closer to Seattle than any Canadian city, right? Like it's not even a, uh, it's not even close. Toronto, which is actually somewhat far away from America. Uh, this it's still well. It's actually immediately next to it if you do not count the water as 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 distance. Like oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's yeah. on the Great Lake, which is the border. So it's it's literally on the border if you don't count the water. Yeah, the only reason that I don't count it is because I have gone from Toronto to the U.S. border, and you have to go all the way around that lake, and it's it's a big lake. I, there's a reason they call them the uh, the Great Lakes, eh? Yeah, <laughs> but but here's the thing: is that you're not going straight. To the border you have to go around a horseshoe shape basically to get to the border yeah exactly. so it's a lot farther than it actually looks like but for instance if we're fighting a war they just they just send their boats over and they burn it down that's true you could you could burn down niagara falls by the afternoon if you wanted to and it's for that reason that ottawa is our capital ah because we needed to make it farther away from the american border because all of our cities were literally right on the american border even ottawa though like i feel like the americans could be there by dinner time like on foot even well yes now but like before when you had to to, to march you had to actually march it was actually a, a decent enough distance and we also built a canal that's completely useless that goes from ottawa to lake ontario really that that was a man-made there's a man-made canal there is there yes it goes from the ottawa river to kingston Jeez. and it's completely useless nobody ever uses it for anything that wait so it's was it like a river that you had to extend or was it like a there's a straight up you built a canal for the sake of some theoretical military strategy that never came into play. Well, it, it, it connects to the Rideau River. It's the Rideau Canal, and it connects to the Rideau River for, for a decent amount of, of the space. But the, there's also, you know, how, like, canals need to go around the bends in the river where there's falls and stuff. Uh -huh. So in Ottawa, there's the canal, and it becomes the world's longest skating rink. That might just be <laughs> a, a tourist name. It might not actually be true, but we call it the world's longest skating rink during winter. I really, really want to go skating on this. Like, I don't. Even, I can't even ice skate, but that sounds amazing. You know, how, why do you say it's useless? Why do you... It basically covers the entire length of the of the 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 center part of the city. But anyway, yeah. So it goes. It's it's a completely a military thing. It never had any commercial usage. See, that's that's the sad thing about a lot. Of, like, I I think it's cool when you do a military stuff. That's like, yeah, but this also has some economy whatnot going on. Like, let's build airports. Heck yeah. But I I feel like canals probably not. Like, whoever thought that would be genuinely useful for anything because I, I mean like surely if the point is to keep ottawa isolated you don't want it to be connected right well you need to be able to get your troops there and back so that was the purpose behind the canal because we didn't want to have the boats having to go along the saint lawrence on the u.s border so the purpose of the canal was that you could go from lake ontario to the ottawa river and then travel to montreal without having to go past the border which is on the river now if there's something else interesting uh, there's yeah, also yeah. a fort on the Kingston side of the, of the canal that was meant to make it so that the Americans couldn't do what you just said and use it to get to Ottawa. And this fort only fired once. Oh, man. And it was to scare a boat away. Oh, that's... It was never used for anything. That is really tragic. I don't know why, but, like, hearing stories about, like, huge amounts of money and time, like, doing cool stuff that just doesn't do anything, that's, like, that's, like, my, my a tragedy to me. Like, I, I love when we do something big as humanity, and it's like, yeah, and we still do it to this day. Panama Canal, you know, that's still, ha how, ma how many times, you know, how many hours does that save for your bananas to get from wherever to wherever? Every single day, every single boat. Panama Canal, heck yeah. Suez Canal, yeah, we nailed that. The Ottawa Canal, whatever you called it, one boat scared away once. That is, that is its history. The fact that we didn't go to war with America is, is, is a good thing, but... I mean, okay, so, it, like... If you just, okay, so the, the only reason you don't go to War of America is because, like, it's not worth it for them to want to conquer you, and you don't have any aspirations of getting anything from them, right? Like, it's as simple as that, no? We actually did have a plan to invade America. Oh, it's got red in the name, right? Yes. Co Operation Red? Yes, it did. I do know that one, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> but the plan was basically to stall them for as long as we can until they kill us, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that, one, that was it. Like, take over one city, so you have some leverage, and then stop them from taking all of yours. And then... It's pretty much it. I, I have seen... <laughs> it's funny. I, I feel like 
America is so well like protected from Canada in that way, and that all of their cities are so far from the Canadian border. Be yeah, besides Seattle and Detroit, that everything is protected. Although you burnt, I, again, I, I know this is a fact, you burnt the White House right once, right? That was the British, that was you. Oh, oops. We burnt the White House once. Yeah, Americans, you like that? You thought I liked you? <laughs> oh wait, do you wanna, do you, like, uh, so I, I have been to not only your country, but also your province. Do you wanna know, do you wanna know how Canada treats British citizens trying to get in? Poorly. <laughs> no, I, every time, Canada, like, I feel like, of all the countries in the world, I imagine Canada and the UK being like best bros, right? Like, you know, cans are cool away or whatever. Uh, tell me if you disagree with any of that. Like, wait, 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 right now? It, name Canada's like top five best friends. Well, the Anglosphere, obviously. List them, you know. You know. It's um, America. Yeah, right. UK, Australia, oh, New Zealand, and Ireland. Although we don't actually. Would you I, put them in that order? The only reason I'm saying Ireland is because I said Anglosphere, so I need to include Ireland. But we don't actually have that good of a relationship with Ireland, so I'd probably say France is the other one because we speak French, obviously, and there's there's obviously the ability to speak is makes it good so did you know that the reason canada formed as a country is because irish civil war veterans decided to invade canada from america to use it as a bargaining ship to release ireland from the uk really so the only reason this country exists is because the irish tried to invade it and thus we decided we needed to be able to defend ourselves better by joining together and the pi of course was like nope bros i'm not going to do this because <laughs> you know i'm not next to the border so i don't need your defense obligations of course darn pei yeah darn pei so just to clarify does that mean that your role on the podcast is now pandering to countries and mine is offending them so you get to tell ireland how important they are what do you mean i was not pandering oh no you, you made it sound like ireland is so good at you know like what they're doing they they try to start a war between canada and the u.s just to get their independence or like just to they didn't, not even really necessarily independence. They just, they wanted something done. So they, they got two of the, you know, now largest powers in the world to invade each other. You know, you ever, you know, you, you can't even get out of bed in the morning, but Ireland can get two countries to try and invade each other. So I, that's, that's how I took that one. Well, no, the, the America didn't participate. It was literally just Irish Civil War veterans doing it on their own. But they tried to pretend they were Americans, no? Or are you, are you, are you saying they literally just got bored and did it? and figured they could yeah they literally just got bored and did it oh man that is i aspire to do that one day maybe that's why maybe that's why canada see so now now maybe it kind of makes sense that with the uk's long history of colonization maybe that's why you treat me so rough at the border but no it, it's actually interesting because canada like I, I don't have many complaints about board control anywhere in the world it's it's a chill process mostly canada every single time they give me a full-on interrogation they check my bags they're like so uh how many days are you in canada seems suspicious that you're here so short it's like do you want me here for longer is that your problem <laughs> like i country i what why would it ever be a, a problem that i'm in canada for a short amount of time why is that ever an issue you know like um but yeah no you, you guys have legal cannabis there right yes that was the thing that we actually got that i wanted the least out of the things that the guy said we wanted <laughs> the other one was voting for him, which he didn't give us. Uh, so I'm kind of pissed at that. Voting for? Sorry, you're going to have to clarify what you mean by all of that. No, I'm not going to refer to him as by his name. Oh, I love this. He, you should not be named. <laughs> anyway, so there was two things he promised. He promised dude weed lamb out. Okay, yeah. And he promised... Voting reform. Voting reform so we could have a voting system where it's more proportional rather than first past the post. Oh, I was correct. We did not get that. We only got dude weed Lamau. Dude weed Lamau. <laughs> I, I hate to bring everything back to the UK, but did you know we had a referendum on changing our voting system? Yeah, and it didn't go through because you still have first past the post. Ex yeah, exactly. The, it's the worst thing because like to me, this is like uh, a good example of democracy actually being sad and dying in a way. The reason, like, because, uh, you know, like most people, when you look up the new voting system, they're like, oh yeah, that seems fair. You basically get to decide where your vote goes. You get to kind of rank choices. But then um, what actually happened is the campaigning was like, well, why spend 250 million on a new voting system when children need, you know, CPR machines and soldiers need bulletproof vests? And somehow uh, the, again, this is so ridiculous and uh, inane, but somehow they managed to have the slogan of 
they need bulletproof vests, not a new voting system. And people were like, oh yeah, why why don't we buy bulletproof vests instead of a new voting system? And uh, yeah, to this day, we use first past the post, which is a terrible name, by the way, because it's not actually first person past the post, right? It sounds like a pretty good voting system. Person who got the farthest past the post. Uh, but like, it sounds like there is a post you need to pass. And once you pass that post. Yeah. But the problem is that the post is always changing. You know, they're moving the goal posts. But I don't, I don't like that it has a, a name that is misleading. I don't, I don't like when names don't match up with their things. Like if Canada was called, you know, uh, actually good country uh, or whatever you would find offensive. You'd be like, wait a minute, that's not correct. And then you'd have to describe, well, you know, we call ourselves a good country, but then we have that province that no one really likes. And we're led by you know who. And I, I just feel like, <laughs> I, love, I love that you straight up are just like, he who must not be named. That's, that's my favorite little bit. Anyway, my point is that a lot of countries do democracy very badly. Even America, you know what, you thought I loved you earlier, but you know, you know how their democracy works? It's, it's not based on people. It's based on land area. Land gets to vote in America. No, that's not, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. Oh, okay. Um, ooh. Okay, let's do this. Let's fight about America's electoral system, shall we? The electoral college, if the last election was done where each state had the exact number of electoral votes that it had based on its population, the candidate that won would still have won. Oh, yeah, sorry. I... The reason that he won was because it was a, a winner-take-all thing for each individual state. So the way the American election works is it's not one election, it's 50 elections that happen at the same time. I, I know all of this and I agree with the fact that, yeah, like it's 50 states electing, or 51 because uh, DC counts for the sake of elections, but it's 51 different elections happening simultaneously. But I also think that if it's for a president of all of those people, that all of those people should be counted as equals rather than saying, because, you know, this state is really big, it counts in a different way than the states that are really small. And that is how it works. If the electoral college votes were distributed in that manner, uh -huh. it would have only made a difference of three electoral votes. Oh, but my, my only point is that you shouldn't be able to say winning Wyoming by one vote matters the same as winning by 100,000 votes. Yeah, but here's the thing. In our elections, it works exactly the same. Except much smaller regions. Yeah, except instead of states, it's the districts. If you win a district by 100,000 votes, you win one seat in the parliament. If you win it by one vote, you win one seat in the parliament. And, and, yeah. PEI, yes, oh, PEI. No, not PEI, come on, not them. Yeah. Not them, anyone but them. They have, like, I don't I think it's like twice as many electoral votes as they should based on their population. You're ruining democracy uh, they, again, Prince Edward Island. Why do you do this yeah. to us, Prince Edward Island? Why won't you leave already? The reason this is the <laughs> the reason this is the case is that they put a clause in the constitution where the a province could not lose electoral votes, and thus PEI did not grow while the rest of the country did, and thus they ended up with about twice as many votes as they should get. Oh, there is um, there's a case in the UK that's way worse. Um... I want to say it's Orkney and Shetland have about 15,000. Oh no, it's a, there is a, uh, one of the districts because um, we, we try to have them be based on geography. Uh, we try to have about 70,000 voters on average per seat, but there's only like 15,000 people living on two groups of islands or something like that, or 15,000 voters. And it means that there is one seat where your vote is worth five times more than the rest of the UK. And I, I don't like that either, I'll be honest with you. Well, we actually have that for Labrador, which is part of Newfoundland because it's 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 part of the continent rather than the island. They decided to just to, to pump it all together, even though the population didn't really work. But because like parts of Canada have more votes than the other ones based on the population, it's not that abnormal that Wyoming might have a different amount of votes based on its population than California. The only reason the, the, the popular vote did not lead to electoral college win is because is not due to the distribution of electoral votes. It's due to the fact that if you win a state by one vote, that's the same amount as winning it by like 40%. Yeah, but I think when you make your district so big, you guarantee that's going to happen eventually. I think instead of having California be one district, you should have it be 55. Instead of Wyoming being one, it should be three or, you know, so on and so forth. Because there's only two states that do that right now and no one cares about those states. But if everyone did that, then all of a sudden, 
you have to care about. If everyone did that, yes, but I still think the election wouldn't have been different because the Red Party uh -huh. won the most seats in the House of Representatives. And thus, if the Electoral College votes were distributed per seat, you'd expect the seat that elected a Red representative would probably elect Red for president. And thus, the Red president would have still won that vote even though they still did not have the popular vote in that case. Yeah, it's shocking you're right that even... I, I would have guessed that because the Red Party got less votes for the president, they'd get less votes for the... Uh, fewer votes for the representatives, but... The, actually, I think the reason this might be the case is that California is actually weird in that there's districts where there's two blue party people running at the same time. Really? Because what they do is they have an open primary where everybody runs against each other, and the top two people will end up in the general election. And oftentimes this means that there's two blue party people running for the same district and no red party people voting for the same district, running in that district. That is a thing that stuns me as real. And thus the people who are in that California and are red do not have any reason to go to the polls during that election, wherever that be for voting for the local district or for the president. And then thus the people who are blue and need to pick between two different blue representatives are more likely to go to the polls. And thus California has a high blue turnout and a low red turnout for this reason. But um, you're actually saying something contradictory to what I was saying. Because I was saying that in the House election, the red party got more votes than the blue party, despite the fact that the same election on the same day that was also nationwide, the red party got fewer votes. Yeah, no, so yeah, what, 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 I, I, I know how to finish your thought. There are more districts where there's two reds than where there's two blues. No. Is that not true? Fact check. Because California is the only state that does that. Nah, there is. there are other states. I do know. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure California is the only state that does that. So they might be the only state that does two blues, but there are, st there are states where there's one red guy and that's it. Oh, yes, yes. No, 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 no. The thing about that is that if there's no opposition, there's only one red guy running yeah. in the general election. What I'm talking about is in the general election, there's two blue candidates who are running against each other that people, everybody will vote for in those seats with no opposition. But I'm saying if you have one red candidate, it's got the exact same effect. No, no, but you, the way it works though is there's a, there's two primaries in those states, one for the blue and one for the red. However, nobody signs up to run for blue and thus there's only the red candidate running and thus you can only vote for the red candidate in that district. Why is that so different though? Why, what is the... As there's no blue candidate running for that district. But in California, the way it works is that everybody runs in the same primary and then they select the top two candidates no matter which party they're from. Oh, really? Yes. Why? Because <laughs> California likes to do things differently. Who knows? I, that, okay. Really? Okay, I, I understand. I thought you just meant that they primary and they figure, oh, if there's no opposition, might as well have the, the general voters decide on. What a ridiculous thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I... no, it works like the French presidential election, basically. Oh, it's a multiple round system. Oh, okay, that okay, that I should. I don't know why, but saying it like that, it does make more sense. Although it's not like France is an ideal system, right? Get out of it, France. Yeah, it's France. Yeah, get out of it, France. You're not, you're not good people. They've been through more governments than they've been through wives. <laughs> I, I love one of the, I think their official name is the Fifth Republic, right? Yeah. I'm always shocked and I'm like, where did the four of, and then you go through and you're like, oh yeah, Con crisis after crisis. That's only since World War II as well, right? I want to say that they've gone through five. Yeah, they've been through two, they've been through two republics since World War II. Jesus, that is quite stunning. That is, it's not a good record if I'm being entirely honest with you. It's not the sort of thing you can be proud of, right? Like, oh yeah, so we've we gone through a couple of these. But why, why do you, okay, um, if I, if we're going to dive a tiny bit from geography to politics here, isn't it surely in the interests in Canada for e either of the two left-wing parties to have uh, a new voting system? Surely, right? The right-wing party wins because they're the only one that's there. Yeah, that's, that's usually how they always won, right? They don't get the majority of the votes, they just make the other two parties fight. Yeah, the thing about that is, is to win a majority... Either party only need to get 40% of the vote to get 100% of the power. Uh -huh. But the thing about that is that the NDP, which is the far, the fervorous left party, uh -huh. get like 20% or whatever. Uh -huh. And then the other two parties will get 40 and 40. A, a movement of a little bit will shift between the, the, the blue party getting 
a majority and the red party getting a majority. So, but that that's true regardless of the yellow party existing. It's orange. Too. Is it orange? Is do you have a yellow party or can I call them yellow anyway? No, we don't have a yellow party. Okay, I'll call them. Yeah, I'll try to call them orange, but in my head they're gonna be yellow. You know. I mean, we could just call it by the names. But no, 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 no. You, you gotta use colors because then is... you can get more easily attached. Because if you say conservative, someone's gonna be like, "I'm a conservative. I like the Conservative Party of Canada, or the CPC, if you will." Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's why I want to avoid saying names because it like just makes people. Well, the problem is, is um different labels mean different things in different countries, right? Like your left wing party is called the Liberal Party, yeah. but Liberal in the UK generally means uh, like it has right wing connotations. Remain. Remain. Like the Liberal Democrats are like very pro Remain to the point that they're not even respecting the referendum. But that's that's not that's not them being liberal though. Uh, are we are we Brexiting now? Is that what we're doing? We're Brexiting the conversation about Canada right into a conversation about the EU. Yes. So. Uh, yes, that's what I was doing. So uh, yeah, in, in the UK we have uh, an orange party. We have to call them orange because there is a yellow party in the UK, quite uh, economically right. It's just they're quite socially left, and uh, their whole thing. Yeah, their, their recent thing is totally just EU centric. It works for them though. It's a uh, it's a big vote winner. They're the only party who comes out and says, "Hey, forty eight percent is that right? Uh, you know, forty eight percent of the electorate. How about how about a party that represents you?" Uh, I think it's really smart, like, political game playing, if nothing else. But you don't like it. You don't like that at all. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't the Liberal Democrats the Yellow Party? They're the Orange Party. The Yellow Party are the Scottish uh, Party. Oh, yeah. The Nationalists. But, like, left-wing Nationalists, because that's a thing we have in the UK. It's kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, the, the way Quebec works is that people are just very pro-leaving, and they don't really care about anything else. And that's why they vote for the... Uh, it's called the Bloc Quebecois, right? Yeah. I'm surprised that hasn't messed up a national election yet, where, like, neither party has a majority. Oh, it did. Oh, it did. Oh. Yeah, it was the second largest party in election. Because you know how there's only one right-wing party at this point? There was a point in time when there was two of them. And the main right-wing party ended up going from, like, one of the biggest election victories ever to having only two seats. And the prime minister didn't even win their own seat. Jeez. And thus we had a... A regional Western Conservative Party as the official opposition. But the reason that they were actually the third largest party is that the Quebec Party did not want to be the official opposition because they're obviously like, we don't like this country, we want to leave, we're not going to be the official opposition. But they could have been if they wanted to do based on their size. Really? That is stunning to me. That is wild that that is a real... You could have had Quebec as the opposition to Canada. And that could have been your official... See, that's that's why I love the terms like opposition and stuff, because like every now and then you end up with a wacky thing like that. I mean, is that not how Canada already works? <laughs> Quebec versus the world. Actually, I am going to offend them. But they speak French, so they're not going to be able to hear this. So it's all good. Well, well, technically, I would say that the French language is more a Canadian language than English is. Ooh, spicy. Why do you think that? Virtually anything that is unique about Canada from the United States is because of Quebec. Uh-huh. The, the, we have a problem with Canadian nationalists is that they're basically not Americans. That's their entire identity. But the only thing about us that is not American is the Quebec part. But they also tend to not like Quebec. Okay. I. They puts them in a very weird situation. Yeah, now you say it, I think I can like, I, I never pieced it together, but like Alberta could totally be one of the middle US states. No one would bat an eye, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really true. Whereas Quebec would be a strange candidate for any of that stuff. Although, you know, I think really the bigger thing rather than the French language is probably the maple syrup, right? That's what makes Canadians Canadian. That's the thing about that is that um, Quebec produces like the majority of the world's maple syrup. Oh yeah, I do, I do know that. I Like uh, there's some crazy stuff like uh, it's in the 80s or the 90s of percentages. Like it all comes from, that's where the good maple syrup comes from. It all, yeah, it all comes from Quebec. So even that is from Quebec. Also, there was a maple syrup heist. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me about the maple syrup pies. We have a strategic maple syrup reserve, and that was what the heist was from. And it was probably one of the most valuable heists in our entire history. 3,000 tons of maple syrup. Jeez, man. That is like... Oh, there's a Netflix documentary on it. <laughs> man, this is... 17 men arrested related to the theft. Yeah, that's a big deal. I can imagine, actually. Yeah, but it's like Quebec's one thing. 
you got language and you got maple syrup. But uh, so what do you think about uh, this is this is a view of the world. I'd love to bounce off someone because I think the way the world realistically works right now is there are three power blocks. There is the United States, China, and then maybe you could call it the EU. Maybe you could call it Europe as a whole. But I think there are three concentrations of power in the world. And you basically have to pick one to align with. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing about the EU is that it, it really doesn't count. Oh, why not? Who's going to pick the EU but not America? Like, the EU doesn't have an army. Uh, statistically, most of the UK. Oh, not, mo- oh, no, not most. Statistically, not most, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I mean, you don't need an army in 2019, right? I don't think there's anybody who picks the EU but does not pick also the United States. They kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, that's the cool thing about them, right? Because we're with the same people, just different continent, right? Tell me if you disagree with that. Yeah. Like Canada's obviously America's hat, so you kind of come on that. Um, but I, I've always thought it's so cool that America is like, you're, they're all the same people, but instead of being united by ethnicities or nationalities, it's like united by wanting to do stuff, wanting to make a better life, to work, to or whatever, you know? So I, I, I think there's a natural alliance there because you just take the same people, but you remove their national borders. And then, of course, they're going to get along. Yeah, that, that kind of does describe what America was. Ooh, was. Ooh, was. Okay, that's uh, you have to explain that one. Please, please uh, give me an explanation on why was. When did it change? So I just think that fits more in like before World War II. I think that after World War II, America sort of became like its own country. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, okay, you know what, we, we, we finally, we're back on the same rails there. I, uh, let's finish off by just doing a quick bit of circle joking with America, shall we? Because, like, I've been particularly fond of the US recently. Uh, I don't know why, they've got, like, a special place in my heart. So, I'll say that I think the whole point of the United States has changed post-World War II. Or even, like, at the start, really. Uh, it used to just be a place where people went and worked, and now they are the world police and they decide how the world goes. Yeah, they have to be the world police. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. And that's almost more defining of their... In order to be the world police, you have to be your own thing. You can't just be a place where people go anymore to do things. Yeah. You have to be the one doing the things. It's kind of sad in that way, isn't it? Like, I, I kind of like the idea of being defined as like, yeah, there's no, there's no people, no this. It's just whoever moves here and whoever has a good reason to be here, come over, friends. I've always liked that as a... As a motto. If America doesn't have to be the superpower anymore, and somebody else can be the superpower, it could go back to being that. But probably not. I think I think it's too far gone at this point that it could basically only possibly be the superpower and nothing else. The momentum of situation is such that it can't undo it. Like, like America has military bases in Germany, right? Yep. Germany wants them to be there. Yep. It can't even leave there without pissing off Germany for not being occupying it with their military. It's kind of a weird situation to be in. Yeah, a lot of countries want to be occupied, don't they? It's kind of, that, that's, it's weird when you say it out loud, but it's totally true. A lot of countries want the US to take some of their territory as a guard against someone else taking the rest of their territory. Yeah, so like what I'm saying is basically America is kind of forced to be in this role even if it doesn't want to be. Yeah, no, it, it, I, it, is, it is totally true. Like you can never have a, like every now and then there's a presidential candidate who's like, hey, why are we spending how many trillions? Why why don't we stop, guys? And then it's never going to actually work out, right? Sadly. Although, to circle this one perfectly, I think the US could go back to its previous thing if they're surpassed as a superpower, which there's only one realistic country that would overpass the US, right? Yeah. What's the name of that country, Van? The country that could do this yep. is obviously China. China. Because... It has a very large population, and even if it were as rich as the Soviet Union was in relation to America, as China will be Uh in relation to America at a certain point, that China would be twice as large an economy as the United States would be, because at its peak, the the USSR was able to get to about half of the richness of the United States. And thus, because China is four times as large as the United States, population-wise, it can be twice as powerful as it, even if it is only able to reach the level of the USSR. Even when it, all it, all it has to do to overpass the tiniest bit is reach a quarter, and then it's a larger economy, and therefore has... That's actually where it is right now. It's, it's really hitting a quarter soon, because their economy is still smaller than the US, right? Well, it depends on how you're measuring it. If you're measuring it based on goods you can buy inside China, 
they're already larger than the United States, but you're measuring it based on goods you can buy on the world market. They are not as large as the United States. The reason is that people seem to like US dollar for some reason, and thus the US dollars can buy a lot more things outside the America than they can inside America. Oh yeah, there's this funny, um, there's the name for that. Um, it's like American privilege or something where Americans- Well, it's actually called purchasing power parity. Purchasing power parity. Oh, but there's a <laughs> American privilege. It's got such a fun name, but um, I think it's, um, I, I was on like Charles de Gaulle uh, named it. Cause like when the rest of the world wants to buy something from another country, they pony up US dollars, which costs them something real. But when America wants to buy something from the rest of the world, they can, they, they, they are the ones who make the money. <laughs> like it's a inverse relationship. Yeah, that, that, is, that is how the world works. But um, And nobody seems to have a problem with it. Maybe we should talk more about how China could surpass the US and how that could change the world in another podcast. Maybe that's, if people like this one, maybe we could do that, eh? <laughs> maybe this is a natural endpoint that I'm uh, sliding us into. So if you want to see more of this, make sure you let us know. Uh, send Van de Graaff a tweet. Uh, he loves it when you spam. Uh, I would love to see more podcasts, please. Um, and <laughs> and if, if he gets a thousand messages, we will do a part two. That is, uh, so just make sure you send all that spam in as much as you can. Tweet multiple times, honestly. Um, and uh, yeah, I, this, this was a fun little thing, I think. It was uh, fun to just talk geography for as long as this video is.